It can be so easy to get stuck on these fast moving platforms like Instagram, TikTok, or LinkedIn, and just dream of starting a YouTube channel. Well, in today's video, we are going to be breaking down the six steps for starting a YouTube channel from scratch and moving from being one of these fast platform creators like Instagram to a YouTube creator. And we're going to be doing that by talking with one of my one-to-one -one coaching clients that I've worked with over the past three months to launch her very awesome YouTube YouTube channel all about makeup. Full transparency, Megan is currently in launch mode for her amazing course that I have personally taken in the past to learn how to do my makeup, and I cannot recommend it enough. She's going to have a free masterclass this week as well as next week for anyone interested in getting your makeup routine updated. That will be linked in the description below. But from now on, we'll kind of focus on getting the YouTube channel up and running, and you'll see what this journey looks like. Step one, branding. Megan, welcome to the show. I'm going to have you kick things off by talking about the process that you went through in taking this experience of who you are from offline and your business and your service-based business and moving it specifically onto YouTube and branding yourself there. Okay. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. And just to give a little context of what it is that I do in my experience, I have been a professional makeup artist for the last 13 years in Southern California. And most of my business has always been in person working with clients one-on-one. -on -one. I started that transition of working towards my online business and that dream in 2019. And I've been just procrastinating, honestly, on creating a YouTube channel since then, but you know, timing is everything. So here I am now going forward with YouTube and it's so much fun. Even just starting with creating my banner, um, really just progress over perfection is the way I went about it. I started with just being really messy and just putting something up and then just sitting on it and um, letting it evolve over a couple of weeks. And then just with creating my channel trailer script, I mean, that really took I mean, again, a lot of help from you, but also going backwards to like my, my tagline and what I'm about and kind of creating this story to take somebody on of what it is that I am here to do and what I'm passionate about. And that is really how I created my channel trailer script. Awesome. And I want to just quickly add one quick tip in this point for if you're out there, you're thinking about starting your YouTube channel. The reason that we start here versus just whatever random video that you want to start creating is because there's so much work that goes into those two things. Like, what is that one tagline? What is your channel trailer? Like, what what is your YouTube channel going to be about, right? And of course, you might have a vague idea at this point, and you can go watch Megan's channel trailer to see how she introduced it. But even having kind of a little bit more of a broad perspective of what you're going to approach is going to help you immensely as you continue moving forward. Step two is your video systems. Once you have your branding in place and everything is set, now comes the time to actually get all of the systems in place. So Megan, talk to me about the experience from your perspective of finding your set, filming your first video, what was your reaction to filming that first video, and then moving towards actually finding the video editor. So from starting with my set design. I had an idea of what I wanted. And then I showed Amanda and she's like, no, we got to figure this out. We need to figure something else out. So we did. And literally it's just like right back here. I cleared out the area and it worked so much better. I did film. I think my channel trailers filmed a little differently than the others. Um, but again, it's just a constant evolution. So we'll see where it continues to go. Once I got that narrowed down, you know, I have to move some things around. Then once it comes down to filming, I do have a script and I try to, you know, I try to memorize it in a way, but also feel free to kind of just flow with it and see what comes out. And sometimes that works a little bit better for me is having an idea of what I'm going to say and then, and then go from there. And the more that I do it, the faster I'm getting. So if you have a hard time with speaking in front of the camera, just know that it gets easier. The more that you do it again, it's like you have to just take action in order to learn and progress. And yeah, facing, just facing those fears with being on camera. I know even just from personal experience, even for myself, like image and the way that you look, it 
does play a part in showing up. And so obviously like I'm checking, like, is my makeup good? Am I going to be happy with this? Is my hair, like, is there anything crazy going on? Which I've already even learned from that. It's so funny. I work with clients doing that kind of stuff for them and seeing behind the scenes and making sure that everything's perfect. And then when it comes to me, it's like totally forgot some of that. And then when I see in the video, I'm like, all right, never doing that again. So again, <laughs> and she's a time. makeup artist. She's a makeup artist and it still happens to her. So yes. I think that's just such a huge thing is the amount of resistance people face in being in front of the camera and nitpicking themselves. So real. Yeah. And, you know, it's just taking certain steps to make that less or to make it happen not as frequently. So final step with finding an editor, we went through, I mean, we went through a lot to, to figure this out. So again, I really leaned into like, whatever's meant to happen is going to happen in its own perfect timing. We had to go through not one, not two, but three editors. The first two totally like ghosted us, even though we had been in communication prior to that. So I was planning on launching my YouTube channel in the beginning of January. I did not end up launching until the end of January. And I honestly just kind of like let go all feelings around it and didn't have any expectations. And I'm so glad that I did because if I was so, if I was stressed out about launching at a certain time, you know, I, that, it's just not the kind of energy that I want to hold on to. So again, uh, everything happens in its perfect timing. So I feel like when, with this kind of stuff, it's important to feel really calm and relaxed in doing, going through that process. And just to kind of hone in on the timeline piece, we started working together at the beginning of October and she didn't launch until the end of January. So I like to tell people, if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, think about it as being a three month journey before you even launch. We've only just covered two steps so far. We're about to move on to the third one and you don't actually launch until step five. So stay with us. So step three is actually developing the content calendar. And this is where we really get strategic about how to warm up your audience for whatever possible offerings you might want to have. So Megan, talk us through kind of how you were, how we went together and approached this process of coming up with the first batch of video ideas. First of all, you have some great tips on how to generate content with like going through your timeline. And I did all of these steps. Um, you know, I'd had your course before, so I went through a lot of steps before we even started working together, right? Um, so content creation, when you and I started working together is really when I started seeing the strategic approach to YouTube. And you had suggested that we start with something that regardless if somebody works with me or not, it's gonna be helpful for them. If somebody that doesn't work with me, they'll be able to see these videos, be able to find the perfect foundation, go through my steps. And then somebody that is working with me, they can still go through the same steps, but they'll be a little bit ahead when they do work with me on how to find the perfect foundation and how to test it out and go into Sephora, all of the things. So I really liked how we really thought about what do I have going on through the year and what videos are going to support that launch, which is now where I'm at. So once again, if you're thinking about this, the, the action item here is to really think about what is that first step on your customer's journey where you can meet them. So with Megan, we started with foundation. Hello, ladies. How many of you struggle with finding the right foundation, right? Like this video, if you do, um, everyone does. So we really started with how to find the right foundation, how to walk into Sephora and actually buy the right foundation and how to test it at home on your skin to know if it's the right one for you. And by the way, if that's resonating with you, once again, you got to check out Megan's course. It's amazing. I'm telling you, it's a life-changing program, but you can also go check out her YouTube channel if it's after the fact and see. That directly pulls in her audience. Step four is to film the first batch. The way that I really like to think about this with individuals is you first film one video, the channel trailer. You're going to take it from start to finish. Then when you film your first batch, you're going to aim to film three to four videos in one sitting, which can be very daunting. So Megan, go ahead and tell us about your experience of going through this and how it can often look imperfect. The first day that I decided to film my first batch, for one, it always takes longer than expected. And what I mean by longer than expected, I mean like the prep work that goes into it. So I wanted to make sure that when I sat down to record, I already had everything lined up and I didn't have any other ideas that I was like, oh, I didn't think about that until right now. So then that way that at that full video that I did record without stopping wasn't like an hour long. 
So what's funny about this is that I, my husband was watching the baby and he, I think came back at like noon and he was like, you haven't started yet. And I was like, no, I have so many other things I had to get in place in order to make this happen. So then when I finally sat down to record, uh, I think it took, you know, it took, it probably took me about two hours um, not fully recording the entire time because there were definitely big pauses uh, in between, but it's just funny how it takes so much longer than you expect, especially with like the pre-production part right before you start to film. And I would say that's even impressive that you were able to film three videos in two hours for information for you guys. Whenever I sit down and film a batch of YouTube videos, it often still takes me to this day about an hour per video. That's what I like to a lot for. And I highly suggest clearing your entire day whenever you're filming. Get the baby off your plate. Like have someone else watching the baby, your husband. Have your kids take them out of that or your husband take the kids out of the house or whatever it is. Clear your calendar to really be able to focus on this and allow yourself to have that procrastination time before you actually start filming because that's an important part of the process as well. And finally, step five, you are actually going to launch your YouTube channel and announce it to the world. We've done so many steps up until this point, which is why it can take three months before you finally launch your YouTube channel. So I like to push my students and my coaching clients to get a hundred subscribers before they even post their first video. This makes you share it very broadly and build momentum to when you do post that first video. So Megan, tell us about your experience of that. First of all, when I decided, like when we had our launch date figured out, I made sure that that first edit was done because I wanted to know for a fact, like I didn't want to have anything going on in the background. Where I'm like, I don't know if this edit's going to be done. I just pushed it out to all these people. So I had my first edit done. I knew exactly when I was going to launch. And then I finally started sharing the news. So I went into my uh, email list. I shared it there a couple of times before I launched. I went into Instagram on stories on my feed. I went to Facebook, um, posted there, went into stories again. I think I went into LinkedIn. So I really tried to cover everywhere that I could and just get the word out and just tell everybody along the way, like I'm trying to get to a hundred subscribers before my first video, help me out. And I, I think when my first video was released, I think I had like 140 subscribers. So I made my goal. I was super stoked about it. And people have been continuing to subscribe from there. Um, so it's, it's already been like so much fun just to kind of get the word out and keep sharing each video as they come. And this is such an important step as well, because it really forces you to admit that, Hey, I'm starting a YouTube channel. So many people. And if you're watching this and you're one of them, pay attention to yourself. So many people, they are posting consistent weekly content, but they don't actually tell anyone that they're doing it. And that is creating internal blocks for your success on YouTube. You want your people to be seeing it. And that's actually a good measure of success whenever you know that someone in your world comes up to you and says, hey, I've been watching your videos. So highly, highly suggest, do not skip, skip this part. It is very important. To add on top of that, I have personally invested not just time, but also money to go this direction. And so that has also really helped me show up in every way possible because I'm like, if I'm going to spend this much energy, um, along all like throughout everything, I'm going to make sure that as many people as possible are going to hear about it. So don't be spending a lot of time creating content for people to not see it, share your message and share, put the word out. Step six is to maintain and amplify. You can't just build this momentum and then stop. So at this stage, I actually released Megan into the world. I'm a big fan of getting people started and then they have to continue their journey moving forward. So Megan is now on her own using this system that we developed together and repeating the process. So Megan, go ahead and tell us about your experience of that. I'm in the process of not just launching, but I also have to now create my next batch. So I have been working on that behind the scenes, which I'm going to be doing soon, but I feel already feel so much better about creating my next batch because I've had the experience of taking action on my last batch. I already have a lot more clarity around the videos that I want to create and also like what people want to learn from me. Um, I think that's part of the starting process is not really knowing 
what people want to hear, but by taking action, that's what you learn. So just to step in here and clarify, how many batches at this point have you done? All right. I started with my channel trailer. I then did my foundation videos, my three-part video series. And then I had my master class, my promo video, and my testimonial video, and now I'll be going into my fourth batch. And with each batch, she learns so much more, and I love getting messages from her telling me all about the things she's learning along the way. And now the next part that I want to hone in on before we wrap this video is repurposing Instagram Reels. So let's talk about it. I have been just experimenting with YouTube Shorts, along with all all like Reels, TikToks, Shorts in general, and just again figuring out what is it that my audience or people want to learn from me and what actually like gets their attention with the information that they want. So I've been going back through previous videos and just playing with it and like throwing things out and seeing what sticks. And some some of my shorts have had really good success and others not so much. So it's been a really good learning process just to see what kind of videos to be creating in the future and just continue to experiment because that's really the only way you're going to learn. And if you're wanting to repurpose your reels or TikToks for YouTube shorts, which we highly recommend, there's no reason to not take every content that you can get and really amplify your YouTube channel by posting consistently. Uh, even if you don't have a long runway of shorts, just doing as much back to back as possible is going to really spike your the experience on your channel or the growth on your channel. So the two apps that you're going to want to know about or really websites are snaptick.app that's going to be able to take your TikTok videos without the watermark on them as well as fastdl.app for your Instagram Reels. Megan, thanks so much for adding your two cents in this video. It's been incredibly helpful and if you are looking for a coach to walk you through this process then go ahead and watch this video next here. I'll see you there.